I talk to people daily here. And I, I talk to them in attempts to wake them up. Everyone. <laughs> and I try to sound the alarms or the warning bell, if you may, to the radical changes that I've been seeing happening and, and growing in the West. I, um, I speak to them as an immigrant who views things with immigrant eyes. Yet I am bewildered at how many people in the West just don't seem to care. The, the, there's an attitude of, it doesn't affect me, so I don't care. And this attitude is going to be the demise of Western nations. If they don't drop it, wake up, unite, and fight back against this growing extremism. I don't know Don Cherry, but I do know one thing. His termination struck a nerve, even amongst the lefties, didn't it? What you're seeing now is the red-green alliance. This is the Islamist combined with the communists or socialist agenda. This is what they do, along with their little militia mo outrage mob that they have created and their allies in the media. What has just happened is that they just targeted and scored a direct hit at one of the most famous cultural icons in Canada and one of the many people hockey fans love. This is simply the beginning. This is precisely what I, along with so many others who escaped extremist hellholes, have been warning you about. Now to those of you watching who love hockey and who grew up watching the show Coach's Corner since you were a little kid, how do you feel? Are you upset that a Canadian hockey icon got fired on Remembrance Day of all days because of your beloved progressive cult? A cult which is mainly run by children and communist university professors, by the way, gender studies, usually. And all of this on Remembrance Day, a day that most of these activist mobs of children haven't the slightest clue about the horrors that it signifies and the newcomers that Don Cherry was talking about. And let's be clear here, he was not talking about immigrants like myself who come here, contribute, respect and honor the Canadian way of life. Don Cherry lives in Mississauga. He's talking about the Islamist bottom feeders who come here and shit all over your country. They call your vets, your parents, your grandparents. They call them war criminals. They call them war criminals and they desecrate your country. But where is the outrage? Where's Rosemary Barton's outrage? Or does she also think that Canadian soldiers are war criminals? It's really quite funny to watch Canadian journalists as they attack and target Canadian icons who are simply asking people everyone to show some gratitude and some respect and wear a poppy and yet your tax dollars are paying her salary how does that make you feel and i want to show you something 
by the way. This is a post by, <laughs> by an imam, a Hizb tahrir imam here in Canada. Um, these are, by the way, the bottom feeders that I was talking about. These are, uh, the, 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 this is the filth that women like myself refer to in the Middle East as filth. <laughs> so his name is Mazin Abdul Atham. Uh, he's from Hizb tahrir very proud of himself. He's got a Facebook page, YouTube channel, nothing's been censored. But I'll let you in on a little secret. Hizb tahrir is a listed terrorist group. Anyway, listen to what this filth that you have let into your country has to say about you, please. Here's a little caption. All Canadian soldiers are war criminals. And no Muslim should wear a poppy to honor them. Mm -hmm. So yeah, please go read it yourself. Now, do you think his little mosque is taxpayer funded? For those who are living in denial and instead just choose to call me names, I really hope that a little light bulb is going off in your head. Let me spell it out for you. They are at war with you. Islamist extremists or political Islamists do not care about facts. They do not care about your perspective. They call you Khawaga, Western fools who are easily manipulated. And they are here to manipulate as many of your children as they can while they steal your treasury and send it back home through their fake charities. They are also here, by the way, to redefine your historical institutions. This is why they label your historical icons as well as your figures as white supremacists, as racists, blah, blah, blah. You know all this. They know it's not true. And those of you who still have the capacity to think for yourself also know that this is not true. But they don't care because this is a tactic that is used. So this is basically how you, this is how you destroy a culture. It's no different than how ISIS destroys sort of historical icons and monuments across the Middle East. Nothing, nothing before Muhammad is allowed to exist. They don't care what you think. They call you Khawaga. And you know what? They are going to win. And I'm sorry, I love you all, but the majority of Western countries are being controlled by pathetic cowards. Meek, beta male, car salesman type, lack a spine, petrified of confrontation. The average Westerner hides behind excuses like, oh, I don't want to get fired. Oh, I have a mortgage to pay. Well, guess what? Your soldiers sacrificed and were maimed for your country, for this way of life that you're now giving away. And they did not hide behind these weasel words. And what has your hiding gotten you, by the way? Another turn of the ratchet towards acceptance. Wait until the local community hockey games are deemed offensive because they are being held during the call to prayer. Because trust me, this is where all of this is headed. And you know what's most offensive to people like myself, to people who live in China or throughout the Middle East or in countries like Iran, 
We, unlike Canadians, were actually oppressed. We actually would suffer consequences if we spoke out. Jail, torture, flogging. What do you have to fear here? Somebody from the HR department sending you a letter? Is that what you fear? Because that is the part that is offensive to the women who are still stuck in Islamist countries, being treated like property, condemned to a life of enslavement and marital rape. You see, we don't have an HR department or a manager to complain to anyway. So today, it's your national sport. What are you willing to give up tomorrow? And how much are you willing to appease? I know many immigrants who come to Canada, come to the West for freedom, and because we admire your culture. But I do have to ask, why do Canadians hate their culture so much? And why do you empower those who hate your country? Let me ask you something. Do you have children who hate Canada, who hate your culture? Why do you tolerate this? You know, I, um, I see people like you and me. I talk to them and then I ask about their children. And then they say, oh, my kid is lost. He's a liberal. He's a socialist. And then they say something like, what am I going to do? Well, you know what you're going to do? You're going to get off your lazy khawaga ass and you're going to be a parent. It's time for some tough love. It's time to discipline the extremism out of your children. It's time to get them in gear because this is your job. From what I am told, this is the kind of tough love that coach Don Cherry was known for. And this is why he was respected. So your children will respect you once you get them to snap out of it. Or we can all continue to be indifferent and do nothing. And then the Islamists and the socialists will take everything from you, everything. So tell me, what will you do?